it depends. Every once in a while, um, I'm a little prone to the impulse purchase, maybe once or twice a year. Uh -huh. um, I know a lot of people are like, are like into the impulse buying, but you know, every once in a while, like I just saw graffiti on eBay and I was like, all right, I gotta have it. <laughs> What's up nature lovers? Uh, welcome to my channel if you're new here. My name is Kayla and I'm working to connect houseplant lovers to nature that we try to surround ourselves with in our homes through caring for houseplants, learning and exploring about native plants and appreciating medicinal plants. We're here one last time with Ren. He is at philo.fix on Instagram. And uh, on this last part, we're going to be talking about his propagation setup and I'm gonna have a little bit of a conversation at the end. So let's get to it. My propagation setup, it's its winter now, so it's a lot emptier than usual. I usually have a lot more of these bins. Um, but I do a mix of like open air traditional propagation, um, like just in, in soil mix. Mm -hmm. And then oh, okay. I also have um, some of the more sensitive plants in bins here. Um, so let's start, let's start with some of those. Here I have, um, I do a lot of begonias. I really enjoy propagating begonias because you can grow them from just one tiny little sliver of a leaf. It doesn't even need to be a whole leaf. Mm -hmm. um, I've even grown some from like a petiole before, which oh, really? I didn't know you could do. Wow, so yeah. That they're, too. they're impressive and it's cool that you can take just like one sliver of a leaf and then um, in just a few months you mm -hmm. have like an actual plant. Yeah. And you um, have a lot of different varieties here too. Yeah, there's That's some, nice. um, I think that one is uh, Luzonensis and then Nigratorum. And I've got, I started quite a lot of the Chlorosticta because I'm always afraid I'm going to kill that one. <laughs> um, so I like to have a few backups. And then uh, I think that one's Microsperma. Um, mm. And then Raja, or Raja, I'm not sure exactly. Um, but yeah, I really, really like begonias, and I enjoy propagating them. They're really fun. Um, and then I know I had mentioned before that I grow a lot of anthuriums from seed. Um, so I've got like uh, a bin here of anthurium seedlings. Um, this is a mix of Gracil and Scandins, and um, this is a hybrid, a really complex hybrid a friend of mine sent me. Um, some seeds for, uh, and that's actually a palisota, which is uh, cam Camelanaceae, uh, Tradescantia. Oh, okay. Um, palisota bartery, uh, an African Tradescantia. Oh. Really cool. Oh, cool. <laughs> But I like the bins because they're really uh, carefree. Mm -hmm. You don't have to water them very often. Um, they're really easy to clean. Um, and they're really space saving. Yeah. <laughs> so, and there's another one with just like some assorted stuff. Yeah. And then down here I have a lot of just like open air propagations. Um, I did a bunch of ZZs from leaf cuttings and they're slowly starting to poke out. Mm -hmm. um, all of those little plastic cups have nice little tubers down there, mm -hmm. so they'll leaf out eventually. And then um, I started another pot of the horsehead philodendron for a friend of mine that is like getting really full yes. now. I think they're gonna like that. Yes. <laughs> Um, and there's just a lot of random stuff down here, and uh, there's a whole other bin of cactus and succulent seedlings <laughs> back there. Um, and then another bin of seedlings here, <laughs> and it's just a little, you know, it's a little busy, <laughs> but it's fine. So you, um, yeah, you just kind of stick to normal soil potting mix. And stuff yeah, like that. so Maybe all of the these perlite, it looks like. are just cuttings stuck down there, and then cool. they figure it out. Um, oh, I talked about the Amplissimum. Mm. I've got a bunch of pots of this one going because I'd like to have a nice yes. full bushy plant of this one. Love those silvery stripes. Yeah, I really like that one. I really enjoy propagating my plants, so a lot of these I end up just giving away or um, I sell plants every once in a while too if I want to buy something fancy <laughs> and I need some extra cash for it. Mm -hmm. um, but it's mostly just because I enjoy doing it. Awesome, <laughs> yeah, and growing from seeds too. I mean, you gotta have a love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's mm -hmm. really satisfying. It mm -hmm. just makes me feel good. <laughs> 
And I guess they all head over to the living room for our conversation. Okay, cool. <laughs> So, um, some pests. What are some pests that you're kind of dealt with and how do you deal with them emotionally? <laughs> a lot of people in the community seem to really struggle with it, especially newer, you know, collectors. Um, and Yeah, how do you yeah. kind of tackle that? So, I've had a few uh, pest outbreaks before. Uh, last year, uh, well, I think it was two years ago now, I dealt with thrips mm -hmm. really bad. And, I mean, that that's just really... <sighs> It's hard. Thrips are mean. Um, most of the pests are relatively easy to get rid of. Mm -hmm. um, like, I get spider mites a lot of the times in the fall, um, especially on the big, leafy, thin plants. Mm -hmm. um, and they're pretty easy. You know, you just uh, keep them washed, keep them uh, hydrated, and they kind of just go away because they don't really like a healthy plant. <laughs> <laughs> but thrips yeah. are something else. They will just just eat everything yeah. um so mm -hmm. i i use uh neem oil mm -hmm. and insecticidal soap mm -hmm. um in combination back and forth as my two like main like pressed sprays mm -hmm. you know when i see an issue um and i'm a fan of the beneficial nematodes mm -hmm. too mm -hmm. um i've had really good luck with those i've okay. they've not only do I just apply them, but I've actually noticed a difference mm -hmm. um, versus just... Yeah, I've used the beneficial nematodes for thrips, too, in the past. That with the systemic um, imidocloprid. Yeah. And so those, I looked, researched it, and they, they kind of go hand in hand with each other to really knock back a population of yeah. thrips specifically. So. Yeah, there's a lot of good yeah. methods. Um, my, my idea has always been that pests are less likely to go after healthy plants. And I have always found that to be true. So I would say my number one pest control is just keeping my plants happy. Mm -hmm. There you go. <laughs> what are some other challenges you've dealt with? I know you recently moved to this apartment. Yeah, um, um, so I moved here about six, seven months ago now, um, and then I moved like two years before that, and then I moved like a year before that, and I've moved a lot, yeah. so my plants have been through a lot of moves, yeah. and I've lost quite a few plants through moving. Um, so that's always been a challenge, but I've gotten a lot better at it mm -hmm. <laughs> through practice. Uh, the last time I moved, I actually like boxed all my plants up as if I was going to mail them. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> so they were... Some packing yeah, stuff. And, yeah. yeah. Um, that's been my, the biggest detriment to my collection has been my moves, for sure. Yeah, and a lot goes <laughs> on when, with moves. We recently moved as well, and yeah, the challenges of just keeping up with everything yeah. plus moving and um, yeah, getting your house in order, too. <laughs> it's a lot. I've had yeah. some good experiences with moving, though. Yeah. Um, I lived in a house where I couldn't grow a begonia for the life of me. Mm -hmm. um, and this apartment seems to be a begonia apartment. They're hey. all thriving. Mm -hmm. Cool. <laughs> so um, it really, it's 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 There's crazy, like, too, what yeah. differences you can have yeah. in just, like, a slightly different environment. Mm -hmm. um, and you definitely have a good relationship with plant, collect, uh, plant sellers, too, it sounds like. So how do you source your plants and do yeah. you research them beforehand and kind of keep an eye out for them? How does, what's your method? <laughs> so um, it really, it depends. Every once in a while, um, I'm a little prone to the impulse purchase maybe once or twice a year. <laughs> uh -huh. um, I know a lot of people are like, are like into the impulse buying, but you know, every once in a while, like I just saw graffitia on eBay and I was like, all right, I gotta have it. <laughs> But for the most part, I'm pretty uh, thought out about the plants mm -hmm. that I want. Um, I go for families that I'm familiar with or mm -hmm. families that I'm interested in. And I like to grow things that are challenging. Um, the last few years, I've been really into the South African bulbs and succulents. And now I'm finding myself really into pingicua, pinkwala, uh, the pinkwicua. Yeah, 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 however you say it. And Ultricularia, um, which are like, um, for the most part, they're submersed and aquatic uh, carnivores, oh. um, which is like just like a totally opposite yeah. range. But yeah. <laughs> I like to grow a lot of interesting and unique things because I feel like it makes me better at growing plants overall. Yeah. So yeah, I like definitely. the challenge. So it's okay to kind of have, yeah, the range of different environments to kind of 
build for your plants. I mean, you'll never know if you don't try. Mm -hmm. So um, even things that are traditionally considered not house plants are really difficult. I still love to give them a try because mm -hmm. sometimes things just really thrive and mm -hmm. you just wouldn't have expected it. Mm. Yeah, speaking of, you know, what are some plants that you've tried and um, maybe heaven, right? <laughs> All of Crassulaceae. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, with the, uh, you know, I mentioned before, um, mm -hmm. I like calanchoes, but mm -hmm. I really have struggled with Crassula in mm -hmm. the past and have just decided that it's not the family for me. Um, that's cool, though. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, that's just kind of how it goes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there are some other uh, families and genera that I've grown before that haven't done particularly well. Yeah, um, you've got to kind of learn what you can handle with your lifestyle and everything. Yeah, like, exactly. And some you, things yeah. just aren't, aren't for it. You've mentioned a lot of having grown plants that are rel related to native plants. Where does your love, how does your love work into native plants? So, plants um, uh, like we have nettles, which are the mm -hmm. urticaceae's. So I'm like, okay, I like the nettles. I like the urticaceae. What urticaceae is grow in Ecuador? You know, I like <laughs> oh, to just okay. kind of go from our families mm -hmm. and then see where, like where they go. So I just like to... Yeah, and you get to really learn about the geography of like exactly. how these families might have been moved around the planet, you know. Yeah, and, and it's really cool. <laughs> I, I just, I'm so interested in the overlap of yeah. families between like our, because we're so temperate and so cold here, mm -hmm. but a lot of the families that we have here are really prominent in like South America where it's very warm and sunny, mm -hmm. especially in like the central South American area. And do you plan on having like a native plant garden? Yeah, um, I used to have a really nice one. I, I had a house a while back, but I would like to have another native garden again at some point. I really appreciate um, our native plants mm -hmm. and what they do for the environment. And I'm always a big advocate for like planting natives. Mm -hmm. And to see the life on it. We had a uh, bone set this past summer and, and swamp milkweed in our containers. And just, it was interesting because pretty much the only diversity we had were house flies. And, it was so strange <laughs> that that's pretty much all I saw. I did see uh, one monarch come and lay eggs on the milkweed, but I don't think we ever got any caterpillars from it. But um, yeah, so it was just interesting living where we live now in Dearborn that that was all we got really was houseflies. <laughs> yeah, you know, I think and we need to build that up a bit so exactly. we get some more diverse, play, diverse insects too. Yeah, yeah, and as you do it, like each year, you know, those, those insects come back and mm -hmm. the, the population gets bigger and better. Um, you know, I remember my mom's garden when she started it out when uh, I was like, I mean, before I was born, but when I was a kid, it was still just starting versus like uh, when she passed years later, like the difference was staggering. Um, the plants were huge. The pollinators were, were plentiful. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it just, it really is something that comes with time. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, you have such a beautiful Instagram. Oh, and so I was just wondering kind of like how your process is and do you do research in order to go through your, your the information because you do good give good facts and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Um I try to post things, you know, that I that made me interested in the plant um or just whatever my thoughts are on the plant. You know, some Usually, like, uh, a lot of people ask how I decide which plants to post, and it's usually just whatever I find myself looking at mm -hmm. the most recently. And my Instagram started as just, like, a photo diary so that I could see, like, the growth. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm actually having a lot of fun. I love to give little, I like giving little information mm -hmm. snippets and just, like, sharing my experience with the plants because especially I found a lot of the plants that I end up posting on Instagram just either... They don't have pictures on Instagram at all, or they don't have pictures online at all. Like, mm -hmm. it's really hard to find high quality pictures of the flowers or of like the back sides of the leaves and mm -hmm. just like stuff that I would have been interested in when yeah. I was looking into the plant. Yeah. So sometimes I try to take really detailed pictures mm -hmm. too, just to put that picture out there into the internet. But yeah, it's just all um, just phone pictures. Mm -hmm. cool. um, and I do it in front of my succulent shelf mm -hmm. over there because it gets the best light. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Ren. And um, again, you can find them on Instagram at uh, feeler.fix. And yeah, this was really fun. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you so much for letting <laughs> us come over twice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no worries. They look, the plants are a little bigger this time too, so yeah. I'm not mad. <laughs> Oh, great. Thank you. Yeah. And thanks for watching. <laughs>